I hope you are all not tired of listening to us. Now comes the most awaited moment. Most of my dear friends also, Mr. Anamal is coming, I am coming. This is what they told. So, I request Mr. Anamalai, Sir, we know that you have been awfully busy. You must have seen in the newspapers, all the Karyakartas of BJP and especially the state heads have been summoned by Mr. Nadda to Delhi. So, he must be having a lot on his, on his plate. He may have to do a lot of homework. We are, they are going to ask him a lot of questions. He should be prepared for all that. But despite all these things, he requested us to prepone the date and he has come here gracefully. I request Mr. Anamalai to please deliver the much anticipated, much awaited convocational address. Respected Dr. M. I. M. Nehruji, Chairman and Dean of James B. School, I am very privileged to share a dais with Professor Chambi Puranik, Chief Academic Advisor, and all the professors who are here, the invited guests, the parents for whom this day is very, very memorable, because there is no great privilege than to see the parent, for the parents to see their children passing out with flying colors, certified by the society as educated, probably in this time and age when the whole world is open in front of them for a greater career prospect. The invited parents are sitting here watching and we must be very conscious of this fact. Many of your parents wanted to achieve something in life. But circumstances were, might not be kind to them. They must have invi invested all their time and effort on the children who are sitting here. They must have sacrificed their life so much so that their sons and daughters get something which they couldn't get. Today is such the kind of day. That is why I mentioned it's a great privilege to stand among such unique parents who have come all the way on a rainy day in Bangalore. And more importantly, the the heroes and heroines of the day, without whom the convocation will be meaningless. Dear students who got their degrees today, who are walking out into a very different world starting from tomorrow morning, where they will have a bit of burden on their shoulders. At the same time, a lot of opportunities and dreams, which they are going to pursue with all their heart. So I take this opportunity to thank, congratulate, all of you, it is only auspicious on this wonderful day, Varuna Bhagavan has decided to bless you. In all cultures, be it Hinduism, be it Christianity, be it Islam, in every single culture, we all place a lot of emphasis on Parampurul, the force of nature. Whatever we do, the nature has to bless us. Among all the nature's blessing, Agni and water blessings are very powerful. Because water is so pure, it comes directly, it falls on your head. That is one kind of a blessing. Agni is also so pure. Whatever you put into an Agni Kundam, it has got the ability to burn everything and make it into a Basma. So today, you, all of you are privileged to get the nature's blessing, which is Varuna Bhagavan's blessing, in the form of pure water. You might not remember this day now, Probably why it is happening, why the convocation is not happening in the outside lawn, why all of us are sitting in the room, why it is raining, why it has created your slight discomfort, why some of you couldn't take a picture outside, couldn't take that perfect selfie with your parents. Probably you are realized, you will realize very soon, that a very chosen few, on a very auspicious day, you get a blessing of this nature, so I am extremely delighted, more than all of our blessings, more than all of us speaking, whatever words we are speaking, 
for the last one hour nature has decided to speak in form of a rain that you should feel very privileged about and more than that i am extremely delighted you are not very ordinary children you are extraordinary people you are extraordinary people we are not sitting in an indian institute of management or a harvard business school or a stanford business school and awarding this degree we are sitting in the middle of children who by virtue of their blood and sweat has earned this degree you are not very ordinary people ordinary people don't work for 5 days a week and ordinary people don't sacrifice their saturdays and sundays and ordinary people don't take a single day off and you have done it which means you are extraordinary that is why possibly they have given the word called gem the name of the business school itself is called gem because gem is a very rare commodity i was very surprised when i got an email from madam who is sitting here when i went to the school school i was very surprised started in 2006 the very first convocation one of the greatest sons of bharat dr apul pakil jainulabuddin abdul kalam ji came apj abdul kalam came for the very first convocation very eminent and reputed people like subramanya swami ji very eminent and reputed people like tn seshan avargal madam nirmala sitaraman very very eminent people have come here when i went through the curriculum a little bit with out of curiosity i found this program is very unique monday to friday saturday you will come study for 7 hours the mba students sunday again you will study for 7 hours monday morning you will be back to your workplace the day you join this program all of you get placement you stick on to that companies for 2 years during your course period then again you work for 2 more years after getting your degree so this is such a unique program that is why all of you should feel very proud about yourself no student sitting in any college across the world would have gone through the grind that you have gone through you should feel extremely happy today is a day that is a culmination of all of your hard work and many days you must have feel very tired many days your body must not be cooperating many days i am very sure you must be feeling like giving up and many days i am very sure you will be questioning the choice of the program that you have taken is actually worth it and today is the answer to all those questions answer to all those tiredness answer to all those doubts and answer to all those misconception and today all of us are extremely delighted such great leaders very well qualified leaders they are getting into serving our country in different capacities starting from tomorrow you are going to have the brand of a double degree certified human being starting from tomorrow morning and your job starting from tomorrow morning will be to put all this knowledge you have earned for the use of humanity for the use of our country and for the use of the world i also take this opportunity to apologize to you that i am the cause of the inconvenience where the program is supposed to happen tomorrow it got shifted today normally programs of this nature when somebody ask me i make it a point to just say i'm very sorry i wish you the very best because i know the kind of job i am in where many things are not in my hand many a times i have to dance to the tune of others and many a times we meet with emergency like most people in your life do that is why i am very specific with respect to committing to a date and once you commit to a date you are not able to make it you put lot of people under inconvenience parents have to travel from different parts of karnataka maybe from tamil nadu maybe from bengal they must have booked their tickets in advance students must have made up their plans but in this case the joy of seeing you the joy of being part of something that is truly a privilege and honor for a person like me where you are going to award degrees to students who have earned it by virtue of their blood and sweat that motivated me to commit to this program but unfortunately i couldn't honor the date that was initially agreed to but still all of you are kind enough to adjust to the new date and i especially say my namaskarams to all the parents 
ಎಲ್ಲರೂ ನಾನು ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಸಾರಿ ಹೇಳ್ಬಿಡ್ತೀನಿ ಸರ್ ಬೇರೆ ಬೇರೆ ಕಡೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ತಾವೆಲ್ಲ ಬಂದಿದ್ದೀರಾ ನಾಳೆ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಆಗಬೇಕಾಯಿತು ಇವತ್ತು ಪ್ರೀ ಪೋನ್ ಆದ ತಕ್ಷಣ ಕೂಡ ತಾವೆಲ್ಲರಲ್ಲಿ ಬಂದಿದ್ದೀರಾ ಅದಕ್ಕೋಸ್ಕರ ನಿಮ್ಮೆಲ್ಲರಲ್ಲಿ ಕೂಡ ನಾನು ಕ್ಷಮೆ ಕೋರ್ತೀನಿ ಸಚ್ ಅ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಗ್ಯಾದರಿಂಗ್ ಲುಕ್ ಫಿಟ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ವಾಚಿಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಸಚ್ ಅ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಗ್ಯಾದರಿಂಗ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯೂಡ್ ಸೀ ದಿ ಎನರ್ಜಿ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಥ್ರಾಬಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಥ್ರೈವಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೈನಿಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಈಚ್ ಸಿಂಗಲ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಹೌ ಯು ಹವ್ ಕಮ್ ಇನ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಿ ಮೆನಿ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಹವ್ ಗ್ರಾಜ್ಯುಯೇಟೆಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಇಂಜಿನಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೀಮ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಸಮಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ದ ಲೈಫ್ ವಾಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ವೆರಿ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಟು ಯು ಯು ವಾಂಟೆಡ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಿ ಯು ಡೋಂಟ್ ಗೆಟ್ ದಟ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಯು ವಾಂಟೆಡ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಅ ಕಂಪನಿ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಿ ಯು ಡೋಂಟ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಹಿಯರ್ ಯು ಗಾಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಯು ವಾಂಟ್ ಬಟ್ ಮೆನಿ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಯು ವಾಂಟೆಡ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಎಲ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಬಟ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಡಿಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗಿವ್ ಇಟ್ ಟು ಯು ಅಟ್ ದಟ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ವೇರ್ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಬಿಗಿನ್ ಮೈ ಸ್ಪೀಚ್ ಲೈಫ್ ವಿಲ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಬೌ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಹೆಡ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಸ್ಟಬರ್ನೆಸ್ life will eventually come around to the people who are stubborn life will eventually make sure you get what you want to the people who perceive so all the people who are here especially the students you are stubborn you are persevered yourself to come here you are extremely hard working five days in the company two days in the campus not taking a single day off no deepavali no ramzan no iftar no dandiya nothing whatever government holidays doesn't apply to you no religious holidays apply to you friends and families wedding function doesn't apply to you you had a single minded dedication and devotion to complete this course to make you better this is going to be the greatest advantage you are carrying into this world and i see james b schools gift to you it's the biggest gift you are taking along with your graduation today you are stubborn you are hard working you can persevere through anything this cannot be taught in a b school this cannot be taught in an iit this cannot be taught in an iim this cannot be taught in the harvard and stanfords of the world this is this inner metal which can only be chiseled by the professors who are sitting here only when you are willing to submit and surrender yourself to this program so all of you have chosen to submit and surrender yourself to this program whatever pace they put through you you went through that pace you never complained and the students who are sitting here bbm bachelors of hotel management and two different batches of mba so almost we are having four different streams sitting here close to 400 odd people getting their convocation degree today the reason i am taking more time to talk about this is because you should feel happy what you have achieved today is something extraordinary not many people in the world will get this truly extraordinary things you have done and today is a culmination of it when i mentioned that some of you weren't successful in your previous avatar a 10th a 12th an engineering you wanted to do this probably you couldn't do that because you have to understand a school or a curriculum tested you on certain components which the real world might not test you in the same component wise the schools have tested you on intelligence but the real world starting from tomorrow morning is going to test you on emotional intelligence the school world and the college world have tested your hard work starting from tomorrow morning the real world is going to test your perseverance the schools and the colleges have tested your rules and order are you coming at 6 o'clock are you coming at 8 o'clock are you sitting through all the classes is your saturday and sunday marked as present here the schools and colleges have tested your rules and order starting from tomorrow the world is going to test you when nobody else is going to watch you till now somebody has watched you whether you are coming your attendance is marked your biometric is done that is rules and order starting from tomorrow morning there is no rules and order for you it is you your mind and the nature to whom you are going to be answerable from tomorrow morning till now the world has tested you especially the school and the college on obedience and authority starting from tomorrow the world is going to watch you on how well 
you do with respect to collaboration and teamwork the reason i am emphasizing this is the world's graduation marks is different from a college or a b school's graduation so if you look at my case please forget for a point of time i am this i am that i have done this thing i have done that thing just forget it just see me as a person who's 10 years before you in this planet just see me as a person just see this human being anomaly standing in front of you as a person who's 10 years before you in this planet just see me like that i did my engineering why did i do my engineering when somebody asked me in 10 what did i want to do i said two options engineering and medical i don't want to do medical i want to do engineering i did engineering somebody asked me why this college i said my friend is joining this college i want to join the join the same college i did my engineering there then after my engineering i took a break year that point of time in 2006 7 taking a break year for a person like me coming from a village a first generation graduate is unheard of i told my father just give me a year i just want to find out what i want to do with my life i am not very clear what i want to do with my life till now life has taken me to an engineering college probably the engineering college i got a job also but i don't want to go to that job i want to take a break here so village my father has studied till 10th standard my mother has studied till 6th standard both of them very great gracefully they gave me that one year to take off they never cared what my village is talking they never cared oh this fellow studied in coimbatore in one of the top engineering colleges he is not going for his job whereas his other friends have gone to a job lot of people have spoken but my parents never cared about it that one year i took off is the most important year in my life i am 40 now if i am looking at all the 40 years of my life that one year is the most important year in my life i worked for a company for 8000 rupees a month my job starts at 6 pm in the evening it ends at 11:30 in the evening because morning till evening my life is all about exploring just to make my ends meet i have joined a company i was sitting in the reception just to make sure i earn something i am not dependent on my father when i had a job with a multinational company in hand i still did not take it lot of my friends call me fools society called me a fool at that point of time but only thing is i wanted to pursue something that was close to my heart i felt my degree is incomplete my education is incomplete i searched for an mba i went to iim lucknow the day one i still remember everybody around me are probably the toppers in their life 10th topper 12th topper engineering topper this topper that topper and very few people have seen second rank in their life i am one of those guys in the batch who is that 70% 75% category guy so two years somehow passed through i am the only goal i had in my life was to learn to seek to assimilate to understand where the world is going again after mba when you are graduating like this i was one among the few guys sitting in the graduating batch 2010 without a job in hand because my civil service interviews was 6 days after my convocation to the day of my convocation to the civil service interview was 6 days i gave my prelims and mains both in my mba time i used to attend a class prepare my civil service simultaneously when i wrote my prelims and mains when i wrote my mains it happened in such a way my mba exams were also happening i convinced my registrar i convinced my dean i will write my mains exam in the afternoon and morning and i will write my mba exam after 8 o'clock in the evening as a special permission so i can relate to all the hard work you have gone through the reason i am sitting here and observing all of you very keenly my life was also in a way mirroring your life i can relate to most of the hard work that you have put through the paces you have gone through i never took a single saturday and sunday off every saturday and sunday is civil service preparation for me saturday and sundays i will take a train go to new delhi get into coaching institutes get the books sit in some classes catch a late night train on sunday night come back to lucknow in the morning attend my class at 8:30 in the morning so i could i could really feel 
that what most of you must be going through sitting here. That is why I am extremely delighted to see all your faces. I am very, very sure all the hard work you have put it will be worth it. Probably you will not realize it now. You might need a 10 to 20 year window period to look back to see what happened in James B school was magical. So ladies and gentlemen, my dear brothers and sisters, all the graduating students here, just be ready because your skills are ready. Like a, like a diamond that needs to be sharpened. A diamond has to go through that process. A carbon, you are looking at hundreds of degrees centigrade in earth for millions of earth. You give that much pressure to a carbon, it becomes a diamond. Even after it becomes a diamond, we are not happy with the diamond. Still you do polishing. Still you do polishing, multiple polishing. Then probably a customer buys it. They give that kind of value to it and they wear it. But for any person to wear the diamond proudly, nobody knows the diamond has gone through thousand years of evolution inside the earth, deep down the earth, as a carbon, hundreds of degrees centigrade under pressure, again coming out, getting cut, then going through multiple polishing and finally being that small dot in, as a, in somebody's ornament. So you have gone through that, you are skilled ready, your mind is sharpened. All you have to do is trust the world. Trust the nature. Whatever happens to you from today, it is all part of a nature. Many things are predestined. And many things you are going to change it by your hard work. Many things you are going to change by your risk taking ability. Many things you are going to change by your foresight. Every time something doesn't go to your plan, just take a deep breath and tell yourself, you have gone through this, which means something best is going to happen to you. Just keep pushing yourself through things that might not happen to you, to your liking over the next 10 and 20 years. This is very, very important. Because now the problem with many of our youngsters is, mind-wise they are not ready. Education-wise they are ready. Some of the best colleges, they have gone through some of the greatest institutions. Some of the best professors have taught them. But mind is not sharp. That is why I am seeing suicides happening right inside IITs. I am seeing the student suicide happening in some of the best educational institutions in our country. Because there is learning, there is knowledge, there is textbook. Everything is available. But somehow mind is giving up very fast to them. So not only has the James B school trained you with respect to knowledge, trained you with respect to subject, they also have made sure, mind-wise you are sharpened, mind-wise you can take up any pressure, mind-wise you can withstand anything in your life, because that eventually will be more important than a mere textbook degree, or a mere a convocation certificate in a piece of paper that is in all of your hand. So here, Secondly, feel happy. Your mind is extremely sharpened. So whatever you want to do out in life, 100% you will do it without fail. Also friends, you are also living in a time, the world is going through a seismic change. Very few generations in our life can say, I saw fire. None of us can say I saw fire because fire was seen multiple centuries before by our ancestors. Some generations have seen a wheel, which we didn't see. Once the wheels came in, the circular wheels came in, again it was a civilizational change. Some generations have seen tools, a hunting tool, a pottery making tool, again it has changed the course of civilization. Some generations have seen the invention of automobile, a car, an internal combustion engine, or possibly an airplane. So you can roughly mark out the whole humanity, civilization into maybe 8, 9, 10, epoch making civilizational shifts. In the last, maybe if you take 5,000 years, you could see about 10 shifts that have changed the course of humanity. Your generation is going to see possibly the 11th shift 
in the last 5000 years which 100 years before it happened in the invention of automobile in the invention of airplanes in the invention of internal combustion engine now this generation your lifetime possibly in the next 10 years you will see an epoch making civilizational shift that is the era of artificial intelligence i am not very sure whether mba programs will exist 10 years from now i am not very sure whether the current model of textbooks would be useful 10 years from now i am also not very sure the current method of classroom teaching would be the same way 10 years from now because you take your cell phone it has come right into your cell phone you not search anything you get into your whatsapp on top of your whatsapp you see ask meta artificial intelligence you can type whatever you want it gives you answers it has come right into your whatsapp every single answer is right inside your phone so this is the beginning of artificial intelligence a machine learning is able to pick up knowledge that is far available is able to condense it in a matter of seconds it is able to feed it to your screen for which we had spent our life studying for which we have dedicated our life perfecting now most answers seem to be in the era of artificial intelligence it has come right into your whatsapp now the next shift from here possibly in the next 10 years from artificial intelligence we will be moving towards the artificial general intelligence which is agi for some of the students who might not be aware what agi is artificial general intelligence agi is the inflection point when the artificial intelligence will have better cognitive skills than a human being so right now this ai doesn't have better cognitive skills than a human being from ai to agi you might see a decade or two decades moment you see artificial intelligence becoming artificial general intelligence agi then possibly we know this is the 11th maybe 12th epoch making civilizational shifting technology that has arrived to go from ai to agi we all have to go through something called aci artificial capable intelligence it is doesn't have the cognitive skills but it can function like an average human being to function like an extraordinary human being with complete cognitive skills it has to go through its agi now we don't know when this is going to happen ai has come we don't know when agi is going to come is it 10 years is it 20 years is it 25 years aci the middle is it going to come in 10 years 15 years we don't know because that is where most of you would be working most of you would be spending your lives in the next 10 to 20 years in this evolutionary shift just imagine just look at my cell phone this cell phone has got multiple microchips it has got about seven or eight major microchips one to control my camera one to control my audio video one to control my processing ability of the cell phone and probably one to control the screen now can can anyone of you tell me the one microchip if i take one microchip in my cell phone how many transistors are inside that microchip 1940 you had two transistors in a chip 1960s possibly you had hundreds of transistors you are standing in 2024 you are carrying the power of artificial intelligence in your cell phone which is going to remove the gap between the haves and the have nots which is going to possibly the remove the gap between rich country and the poor country in the form of a chip the current chip which my cell phone is using has got 13 billion transistors in a single chip 13 billion transistors this is the world you are entering so whatever you do in the next multiple years be conscious of this fact be conscious of this fact there is only one company in the world 
which manufactures almost 100% of what we are talking. There is only one company in the world which manufactures a machine which manufactures the transistor. There is only one company in that world which can assemble and bring it to you as a cell phone. Most of the chips that I am talking here is manufactured by a company called TSMC, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company based in Taiwan, 100% of the high-end chips. There is only one company which manufactures the machine for manufacturing that ship. That company is based in Netherlands. It is called ASML. Only that one company, the costliest technology company in the whole of Europe, which manufactures that machine. It is this Apple which has got the capacity to assemble that processing power. The reason I am giving you this as an example is, this should be an inspiration to you. MBA is a general program. All of you read general things here. And very little specialization happens. Even if you are a hospitality management MBA person, supply chain and logistics MBA person, we teach you HR, we teach you a bit of finance, we teach you a bit of logistics, we teach you a bit of marketing, we teach you everything. But you have to understand, the world is again entering into specialization. Whether you like it or not, the world is again getting back into specialization. People who can do that one job well, will excel, not doing the 10 jobs average. Possibly your generation starting from this decade to the next three, four decades, will see the pinnacle of specialization. One chip company manufacturing chips, one company manufacturing machines, one company assembling, it is coming to the end user. You look at the top companies in the world, if you look at the number one company in terms of market capitalization, Apple, complete specialization. If you look at number two company in the world, Microsoft, complete specialization. If you look at the number three company in the world, NVIDIA, which manufactures all the GPU for your gaming, again specialization. If you look at Meta, again specialization. If you look at all the top companies in the world, they are getting into specialization. This is where I see a great future for all of you. Probably you will think through, you will, you will look into the life very carefully and you will pick up that one thing in your life for which you want to dedicate your life to it completely. Because we all have to understand great things happens by sacrifice. Great things just like that don't happen. So we want all of you not to be a normal person working in a normal company, doing normal things and living a normal life. You are extraordinary people, never forget it. You are not normal people, you are extraordinary people. Monday to Friday working, Saturday, Sunday studying, two years you have done it without fail, which means you are extraordinary. Extraordinary people need to do extraordinary things. Extraordinary people the world will not accept if you do normal things in your life. So we hope and pray in a country like India right now, possibly one of the best country to live in the world. If somebody has asked 1960 which is the best country, we will say without fail it is America. Because we are coming right after World War II. America is becoming a manufacturing powerhouse. It is going to be a rich country in the next 20-30 years. It is going to be a superpower. Everybody will say America. If somebody has asked us 100 years back, which is the best country to live, we would have said UK. Because 70% of the world was under the control of United Kingdom. Possibly they had the tools, they had the control mechanism of the whole world, UK. If it asked me in 1970-80, which is the best country in the world, we would have said Germany. Or maybe parts of Europe. In 2024, if anybody is asking you which is the best country in the world to live in for the next 50 years, without a doubt, it is going to be our country. Without a doubt. I am not just saying this to motivate you. I will talk with facts. I will talk with facts. I am not just saying because you will clap when I say India is the best country to live for the next 50 years. A population of 142 crore. No other country is comparable to our country. We are number one in terms of population. 
but we are not so interested about the population we are interested about the quality of the population how is our population 40% of this 142 crore they are below the age of 25 years just imagine 25 years and below 40% of 142 crore which is approximately 60 crore which means all of your youth the whole world is open in front of you the whole world is your market india is going to be the human resource capital of the world for the next 100 years you want to have a ceo for alphabet please call sundar pichai you want to go have the ceo please call an indian origin guy you want to have satya nadella please call him an indian origin person you want to run some great American fortune 500 company, please call an Indian origin CEO. Whether we like it or not, some of the top corporations of the world, maybe 20 years from now, I look forward to a time, 50% of fortune 500 companies will be run by an Indian or an Indian origin person or a person who has spent considerable time in our country. 50% of fortune 500 companies, 250 companies. Right now we have 19 companies run by Indian origin CEO. You will see a world where 50% of fortune 500 will have an Indian origin CEO. Because this will be the world's largest market. No other country is going to have the, have the market that we are going to have. And this market is the most complex market of the world. Being an Indian, born here, studied here, we have prepared you for a global role. You know what the complexity of this country. I speak a different language, you speak a different language. I dress differently, you dress differently. I have a dialect, you have a dialect. You go to Northeast, that is slightly different in terms of food. Kashmir is different. Inside Karnataka, Kurg is different, Mysore is different, Shimoga is different, Bijapur is different, Bangalore is different. Inside Bangalore, JP Nagar is different. So you are living in a country that is so complex, but all of us are united by the spirit of Bharatiya. This complexity has prepared you to face any complexity in your life. That is why the world wants Indian origin CEOs. Because you handle complexity extremely well. For Americans sitting in New York, for him Japanese, Chinese, Germans, Koreans, East Asians, Africa, Old Europe, New Europe, North America, South America, it's all the entire complexity. But you guys will handle just like a, just like a cap on your head because you know what complexity is from the day you are born. This is my second reason to say your generation is going to live in the world's best country for the next 50 years. The third. This is the fastest growing country in the world. Fastest growing. We just grew 8.2%. Growing 8.2% is not a joke when countries are growing at 1%. Germany, 1%. UK, 0.5%. China, 4%. America, 2.1%. The, the G20 countries as a whole, 3.2%. Japan, less than 1%. In this era, Bharat is growing at, we just finished 8.2% growth. Because the labor, the skillful labor, the management, the people whom we have here, all of us are so hungry. We want to achieve something in life. The whole of India is hungry. This is my point number three to say why India will continue to grow for the next many, many years. We are at four trillion dollars now. We just have to catch Japan. We have to catch Germany. You catch hold of these two countries probably in the next four years. You will be a seven trillion by 2028. You will be the third largest country in the world. You just have China and US above you. 2047 we are extremely sure we will cross 50 trillion. Right now we have 4 trillion. Just imagine this country will grow 12 and a half times 
over the next 24 years no country in their life has grown at this pace roman empire did not grow pax britannica did not grow europe did not grow america did not grow india will grow 12 and a half times in the next 24 years from 4 trillion to 50 trillion point number 4 when you hit 50 trillion dollars you are obviously world number 1 we will have so much wealth we can take care of all the social problems poverty we can take care technology with money makes the standard of living more comfortable age old diseases we can find a way to cure it old people giving them a comfortable living we can do that changing the mode of transportation we can do that right now one bullet train from Ahmedabad to Mumbai is costing 1,60,000 crore to build. Now we want to build Hyperloop. Just imagine building a Hyperloop. With money, India can do anything. Your generation is going to make it happen. So don't even waste away this precious gift nature has given. Born around 2000. Getting graduated around 2024. Entering into a country that is all set for growth entering into a country that has just grown 8.2% and this country going to grow as per our prediction 12 and a half times in the next 24 years what more can you ask sir? everything is available you just have to go open the tap and get the job done that is why I hope and pray all the young graduates who are here there is going to be a beautiful life ahead of you. Now coming to the last part of my speech, I thought whatever mistakes I have made, me being 10 years in front of you, I thought I will give you some tips. Normally this kind of big lectures people forget. But small tips they will remember somewhere. So six things I thought I will tell you today as your well-wisher, as your older brother, Probably this might help you. The seniors who are sitting here, I am very sure they are more intelligent than you and me. They have more wisdom than you and me. We being young people, sometimes we should really keep our principles intact. Everything is fine. Country will grow. Money will come. Economy will boom. 50 trillion dollars will happen. India will become a superpower. Everything you will see before you turn 50. 100% you will see. But still, I felt... The six tips are very important because we got to do it the right way. We should not do it the wrong way. The first one I thought I'll share with you is always keep pushing yourself. Today only studying has ended. Learning hasn't ended. Studying a book, passing an exam, professors evaluating you, giving a mark, Whoever got the highest mark, we gave gold medal. Only the studying has ended today. Learning did not end. Tomorrow morning, new technology will come. You got to keep reading, keep learning in the field you have chosen. You got to keep studying what is it. You got to be a master of your field. Till you die, you got to keep learning, learning and learning. This can only happen if you come out of your comfort zone. 15 days from now on 28th I am flying out of this country to Oxford for a 3 month program when somebody told me oh you are a busy politician why do you want to study now you have done your engineering, you have done your MBA and politics teaches you everything in the field you meet all kinds of people, why do you want to go and learn my answer is which I told many of my well wishers and my friends and my parents also being a student at a point of time in our lives always brings back that hunger. Sometimes we get used to the comforts of life. When we force ourselves to be a student for some time, even the wrong things that has got into your head, you will remove it. So I am again becoming a student on 28th of August. I am doing a fellowship in, in Oxford in London. A three month program where I will stay inside a hostel, walk to my classroom, carry my ID card, 
sit in the classroom, listen to the professors, finish a thesis, then I'll come back to our country in the last week of November. This I believe I have to do. No matter what, I have to challenge myself. Now my goal is to see different cultures, learn people, see them, understand how their democracy is different from our democracy. Intermingling of global population. What do they think about India? It's an opportunity for me to present about our country. So my advice to all my young friends is, reading has ended, learning has only begun. Keep pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. Keep learning, learning and learning. If needed, after some time, maybe after 10 years, you want to take a break and do a fellowship or do a course or do a one-year course, please do it without even thinking because the world will again keep you ready for the things that will come. Second one I thought I should tell you is, always remember, money can buy you many things. But money can't buy all the important things in life. Money can buy a car. Money can buy a sort of social prestige. Money can buy a bit of peace and happiness. Money can buy you comfort. Maybe after 40 you will realize there are many more things in life that are more important than money. Meaningful relationship, family, your friends, your social life, sense of balance you have in your life. So as this young graduates here, as you start chasing money, always remember along with money, you got to chase other things also. You will get good friends only when you invest on them, only when you give time to them. You will have a meaningful relationship only when you are available to your parents, only when you are available to your children and your spouses. So these are very, very important to you in the next 10-20 years. You will become busy. You will be big guys in an organization. You will be doing multiple things in your life. But always remember, some relationship, if you don't nurture now, you will not get it back. At 25, 30, you got to take care of your parents. Your parents need you now. Not when they become 85 and when you become 55. It is very important, whatever you do, make sure you allocate time for all of this because money can buy many things, but money can't buy many important things. Possibly at 60 we will realize this are more important than money. So let us not make the same mistake many of our brothers and sisters from the previous generation made. Let us chase money, build a career, make products, sell, sell it, invent companies, let us do everything possible. Take time out to breathe. Take time out to see the nature. Take time out to see a beautiful sunrise. Take time out to sit with your parents and drink a cup of coffee. Take time out to go to your friend when he or she needs you. Because giving, you will get it back eventually. I am very, very sure the young graduates here will consider this also in your busy lives from now on. Third thought I thought I should share with you is always keep a hobby. When somebody asked Abhinav Bindra after the Beijing Olympics, now what? You want a gold in Beijing Olympics? The last shot Abhinav Bindra shot in Beijing is 10.8. Normally in a, in a rifle shooting, you have 7, 8, 9, 10. But in Olympic shooting, there is no 10. There is 10.9. Perfect of perfect. The middle of bullseye is 10.9. 10.8, 10.7, 10.6. There is 10. So Olympic is such an accurate sport. The Olympians don't go for 10. They go for 10.9. Which means the middle of middle. So they ded dedicate all their life to chase that excellence. When somebody asked Abhinav Bindra, now 20 years of your life and dream, you got an Olympic gold medal. What do you want to do now? He said, I'll find out. 25 years I wanted to be an Olympic champion. I've done it. Now I don't know what I want to be after winning this gold. My whole life 
was trained to get this gold. I got this gold. You are 35. What will you do after 35? The main problem with our current generation is they are burning out so fast. 35, 40, 45, EMI, nice apartment, EMI, good car. We are earning well enough to do two foreign holidays in a year. We are earning well enough to have a certain social standing. When you talk to your colleagues at 45, 50 years of age, you ask them, they say, there is some emptiness in their heart. Whatever they want to do, they have done it. Whatever they have to achieve, they have achieved it. They have done great things. Unicorn, at 37, the youngest billionaire from, from Bangalore, Nikhil Kamath, 37 years, 3.8 billion dollars, all done, dusted, all done. What will you do at 50? What will you do at 55? The thing we have to learn from all our great people sitting here is, we have to age gracefully. It is not a great thing to say, I am great at 30. No. It is important to say, are you great at 60? Are you great at 70? Are you great at 80? Are you great at 90? Are you great at 100? The reason I am asking you this question because, your generation, you are going to live more than all the previous generation. Because you are living in the era of terrific, terrific research. Terrific research happening in synthetic biology. Google has put thousands of crores into synthetic biology. Stanford has done pioneering research. How to extend your life. How to make sure the telomeres on top of your cell. How, get, how, how we can minimize the damage for the telomeres so that your longevity goes up. If there is a problem in your liver, we can fix only that liver. Or we can get into your DNA, fix it and come out. So next 20, 30 years you will see all sorts of things happening where you will live for a longer life. But the question is, do we have to live an empty life? After 45, after 50, should our lives be empty? How we should live with our grandchildren? You and your wife are the lady here with your husband. So both of you should hold your hand each other and live gracefully till 85, till 90. That is life. So I hope and pray in your busy lives from tomorrow morning, traveling all across the world, working, you will find a hobby that will always keep you alive. It could be running. It could be a sport. It could be anything. There should be one thing in your life apart from work. Because work will always bore you. However motivated you are, however great you are, work will eventually bore you. It is this hobby. That is why in the recent Paris Olympics I saw, many investment bankers have won Olympic gold. It will be very surprising for you. Especially the Olympic sculling and the rowing. Some of the top investment bankers of New York, who run 1 billion dollar funds, who earn 20-30 million dollars a year, they won an Olympic gold because a sculling or a rowing is their passion. A horse dressage is their passion. Show jumping is their passion. There is a job, there is a life. But they never allowed their passion to die. So I hope and pray all my young friends who are here, by pursuing a hobby very seriously, you will live a multidimensional life. You will live a long life. You will live a happy life. You will live a meaningful life. Because once you hit that 100 crore or 50 crore or that first house or the first Benz or the first Audi, what after that? There is nothing after that, sir. The secret of life is after reaching there, there is nothing after that. So we all chase, chase and chase. Once you get it, it becomes meaningless. So let us get it. It's okay. Let us get it. Comfort us in life is important. But what I am trying to tell you is, even if you get it, there should be something inside you to keep you happy and alive. The fourth one, I thought I will, inf I will tell you is, life is always fair in the end. My IPS batchmates, I had an interesting set of IPS batchmates, 150 in the batch. Somebody is a bus conductor. Bus conductor. Wrote the civil service exam, cleared it, became an IPS officer. One of my batchmates who is in Orissa now, a Tamil brother, he was a hostel warden. 
he ran a small roadside hotel he did everything possible ips officer lady officer in delhi again from tamil nadu husband was a constable they were doing parade every friday she was coming and watching her a constable husband standing in the parade she asked her husband who is that person standing all of you are saluting he said bada sahab sp ips officer she said can i become that ips officer the husband laughed to prove her husband wrong she also became an ips officer so we have stories like this in batches after batches the reason i'm telling you this story is life is not always who starts first life is always who ends first so just imagine life is very fair to you life is never unfair to anybody you might say oh i did so many great things life is not fair to me i studied so much i am unlucky you see for 40 years i did not get anything but this fellow got everything you might say if you look at the life as a totality life will always balance when we end our life life will always give what we want i will again give an example when i was a asp karkala western guards later i became the sp of udupi one of the constable who worked with me ram rod straight constable a person of highest integrity and you all know a constable gets how much salary 25000 he works 16 hours this guy doesn't take a single rupee single penny always straight obedient diligent many people used to laugh at him as asp we live in a small office this this fellow doesn't know how to live his life he could have taken some money here and there some 20000 30000 extra in a month which will add to his salary which will come down to 50000 he could have lived a comfortable life look everybody is taking but god is not punishing them police is not catching them lokayukta is not catching them anti corruption bureau is not catching them very shamelessly this people stopping a guy going in a two wheeler in the middle of a road very shamelessly is collecting 200 rupee but nobody is taking any action and many people in their service by being corrupt has also retired at 60 years without getting caught for every one person to get caught i would say 90% of corrupt people they retire without getting caught every one person they get caught 90% of people happily retire without anybody catching them then we ask ourselves what is justice what is karma somebody is making a mistake no punishment but a government clerk earning 25000 rupees is ramrod honest is suffering living in at 8000 rupee house not able to give good education to his children not able to take his children to a good hotel not able to buy a good dress when that person could be corrupt but still he chose not to be corrupt so do you know what happened that constable son became an ips officer it just happened it just happened it just happened when the father was in the service the son was an ips probation then one day in a meeting i was telling this is karma karma will always balance things in life so youngsters here have to understand life is always fair to all of us you might not get something today doesn't matter sir doesn't matter you will get it when you need to you, you will not get it when you don't want it to happen so all of you my sincere advice to all the young graduates here over 60 years over 70 years you might not make more money your children will be great you might not make more money your father will live long you might not make 1000 crore your family will be happy other sense you might make 1000 crore but 50 years you might go to jail for a corporate governance fraud you might make 500 crore something will happen to your children or to your parents so always remember
karma will eventually get back at each one of us nobody can escape this earth without paying the price for karma so you got to be patient that is more important you got to be patient something doesn't happen means some good things are waiting for you something is delayed means some great things are going to happen in the near future with the spirit of positivity life is always fair to everybody it balances always something it will give you something it will take you something it will take something it will give totality life will be fantastic so remember this don't feel bad i didn't get it today don't feel bad i didn't get that promotion don't feel bad the first company you started is not doing well keep trying keep doing your hard work keep preserving yourself things will eventually happen to your friends last but not the least be spiritual all faiths are here i see lot of parents from the islamic faith here lot of people from the hindu faith lot of people from the christian faith people from the other faiths also don't confuse spirituality to religion both are different islam says five times you got to pray that is the faith of islam hinduism says you can worship your god any way you fall you say namaste you come on monday you come on saturday you eat non veg and come you eat veg and come everything is okay Christianity says you come on Sunday you will be like this so every faith has got a percept so i am not saying spirituality is equal to religion i am saying spirituality is understanding who you are being comfortable with who you are living peacefully with who you are being this very three things understanding who you are being comfortable with who you are being at peace with who you are we can do all kinds of things in tamil there is this famous comedy by one actor called vadivelu he said but very big statement though we laughed at it oru mani nera summa ukkaradhu evlo kashtam theriyuma he said sitting one hour ideal is how tough because we are not able to live with ourselves we are so distracted by cell phone we want to watch our cell phone even no whatsapp message we still want to open your whatsapp message see and close it no message in instagram nothing is going to fall still open the instagram and see what my friend has eaten for dosa what profile picture they have keep kept nothing is there still open your email and check whether somebody has sent an email problem is because there are so many distractions in our life spirituality teaches you to live with yourself comfortably yoga please do meditation please do you want to do extended namas please do you want to take a good pilgrimage please do you want to hike a mountain on your own please do spirituality you will only realize when you push yourself when you are an ordinary person you will not realize spirituality an ordinary person has to push himself or herself to realize spirituality it has to be a yatra it has to be a surrender it has to be a fasting it has to be a penance only this will kill your ego only when your ego is killed spirituality is born inside you till the ego is there spirituality is not born we can go to temple that is just a drama we can give 500 rupee in the archaka's plate so that he will make you to stand first and give you the first prasadam useless you can go to a temple i can give you all mala mariyada as the vip total nonsense that is not spirituality that is a bogus spirituality where we are telling everybody we are also doing namesake spirituality spirituality is surrender it's penance it's pushing yourself hurting yourself doing a yatra or a journey where you are going to see your extreme limit i hope and pray all of you here 
you will get that opportunity in your life my islamic friends when you get the opportunity to go to mecca medina please do it very strenuous spirituality go do it you will realize who you are as a person my hindu friends if you get an opportunity to go to kailash kedarnath badrinath strenuous push yourself please do it sabrimala do it my christian friends you want to practice this lent properly you want to practice your christmas properly please do it my jewish friends you want to practice sabbath properly please do it that is why our forefathers have beautifully kept spirituality in each of the religion but we are not able to differentiate between spirituality and religion so my sincere prayer to all of you is you will keep pushing yourself keep going outside your comfort zone you will understand money can buy many things money also can't buy very important things you will understand life is not at 35 life is at 75 if you want to be alive young even at 75 you got to have a hobby and my young friends you will understand life is always fair in the end karma will catch up with us eventually we all have to pay a price to karma none of us will escape so let us live our life the right way and my young friends i am very sure you will also understand your real awakening behind begins only when your spirituality opens inside i hope and pray you will not confuse religion and spirituality you will discover your spirituality inside where the true meaning of your being you will realize and then you will live a very happy comfortable life just to end i am not sure how much of my speech made a sense to you i am in my last 2 3 minutes how much did i really connect with you i am only trying to emphasize you are special people you are extraordinary people you are not normal people which means your achievement will be extraordinary i can take a piece of paper i will write it down come give it in each of your hand if it is not happening after 10 years you can take my property so all the b school students who are here because you are special five days work two days studying sacrificing your life which means you will achieve greatness in your chosen field so that is a given we all want you to take risk it is given you know you will achieve great things in life please take risk please take risk i am begging you please take risk start a company take risk travel somewhere take a risk you want to make your hobby as your profession please take risk you want to quit everything start something fresh tomorrow morning please do you are afraid of doing something till now you want to pursue it next week please do why i am saying this because there is no better time than pursuing your passion you are living in this country the world's youngest country which in 25 years is going to be the world's number one economy which you will be a part of and we all of us want you to be really extraordinary in what you choose lot but last but not the least life has tested you in some way don't feel bad starting from tomorrow life is going to test you in other ways in which you will be toppers you will get all you want in life don't worry about that last but not the least i gave you five tips don't forget it coming out of your comfort zone remember the importance of money and also not the importance of money importance of hobby importance of karma and life being spiritual i am very sure small world sir we'll keep meeting each other whenever i happen to see you if i'm able to remember your face i'll say hello if you're able to see me and remember my face you please say hello to me so that let us check on with each other what each of us are doing what i am doing what you are doing let us keep a track of each other for the next 25 years and make this country a great beautiful developed bharat for which all of us should play a major role i take this opportunity to thank the two eminent gentlemen sitting in the stage james b school
the chairman and dean mim nehru ji and the chief academic advisor professor chambi puranik ji and all the parents once again my apologies sir for the trouble it is supposed to be tomorrow you have come all the way for today thank you so much for coming and all the guests who have come from different parts of bangalore and different parts of india are not worried about this inclement weather i bow my respects and my welcome to all of you and all the students who have come here you will do great things in life relax chill have a great fun day today let us start our work tomorrow all the very best take care bye